Greetings, viewers. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the first episode of my AI President D&D campaign. Just to make some things clear, this series will include AI voices and imagery purely for parody and entertainment purposes. I assure you, I didn't get the real presidents of the United States to play D&D with me, although that would be pretty damn cool. Also, I would like to make it clear that I will never fabricate the dice rolls, meaning every roll is legit. Every dice was rolled using D&D Beyond, and I will not edit them whatsoever. Next, I would like to go into more detail about the Monster Hunter-based campaign we will be playing. This homebrew world was heavily inspired from the main story of Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, and was created using M. Elwin's Guide to Monster Hunting, an amazing book that seamlessly combines the world of Monster Hunter and D&D together. Lastly, this channel was inspired from the much better AI president YouTube channels like Coco Mimi, Malathrex, Crafty GG, and The AI Guy. Without further ado, let's begin our journey into the world of Monster Hunter. Thank you all for coming today. I've been waiting a long time to start this campaign and I'm ready to get right into it. Yeah, me too. I've never played D&D &D before, so I'm pretty excited. I just hope that excitement will keep you from taking a nap during our first session, Sleepy Joe. Oh, come on, man. We just got here and you're already laying into me. Besides, I had a five hour energy earlier, so I'll be completely fine. Uh, are you sure that's a good idea, Joe? That stuff might be a little too extreme for you. I can see you shaking a bit already. Dear God, I think that five hour energy drink is slowly killing him. Just try to make it through the first session, buddy. Nah, the shakes have always been a thing. Don't worry about it, guys, I'll be all right. All right, Joe, whatever you say. Also, before we start, have any of you played a Monster Hunter game before? Nope. No, sorry, can't say I have been. No, of course I haven't played Monster Hunter before. Do I look like a nerd to you? Just wondering, guys. Anyways, moving on. Who would like to introduce their character first? I guess I'll go first, Ben. Okay, go right on ahead, Barack. All right, I will be playing as Barama, a Wyvarian wizard who was born and raised in Perna Village by his loving parents. His father was the chief researcher at the Y Academy, which helped spark Barama's love for science and the world itself. When Barama turned of age, he enrolled in the Y Academy and studied with his father to learn more about the world and its inhabitants. After a tragic incident, Barama received a letter from a mysterious person requesting to meet in Valhavar. In hopes of finding answers, he set off from home and began his journey. Oh, very interesting. Would you mind telling us more about this tragic incident? I'm afraid I can't do that, Ben. I'd like to believe that you all will find out what happened at some point in the future. I can respect that decision, Barack. Who would like to go next? Ooh, ooh, me! I want to go next. All right, Joe, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. I will be playing as Jiden, a variant human bard. Jiden is a well-known performer in Dundorma who would frequently visit the local tavern and gathering hall. He loved to hear the thrilling stories hunters would tell about their most recent hunt and started to wonder what his life would be like if he became a hunter himself. He landed upon the Royal Scrivener's headquarters and began his journey to become a hunter. After years of research and hard work, he was officially recognized as a hunter of the Royal Scrivener's. The head scrivener gave him a letter, which was an invitation to join a great expedition. With this new title in hand, Jeden decided to travel the world in hopes of going on a crazy adventure. Yeah, sounds like a pretty lame character to me. I mean, out of everything you can play as, you chose to play as a human? Well, who are you playing as then, Mr. Uh, um, Mr. Uh, forget it, I can't think of anything clever. Yeah, no surprise there, Sleepy Joe. I'm surprised your head didn't explode trying to come up with an insult there. And for your information, my character is a certified badass. All right, we'll go ahead and tell us more about them. Of course, Ben, I will be playing as Trump, an elder dragonborn barbarian with the Nergigante Draconic ancestry. Well, it certainly sounds interesting so far. I can't lie about that. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Donald, but what's an elder dragonborn? Uh, an excellent question, my old senile friend. The Elder Dragonborn is a variant of the normal Dragonborn, but instead of picking a boring-ass dragon as my ancestry, I get to choose to be a descendant of an Elder Dragon from a list of Elder Dragons within the Monster Hunter series. And of course, I chose the most badass Elder Dragon to use for my ancestry, the Eater of Elders, the Nergigante. Whoa, that does sound pretty badass. What else can you tell us about him? Well, my friend, I still have to talk about his backstory. Tromp never knew, knew where he came from or who his parents were. 
His earliest memory is being taken in and raised by the Guildmaster in Minigard, a decent-sized hunting village. Years passed, and the Guildmaster enrolled Tromp in the training program for hunters. Due to his beastly form, he was easily able to finish the program and take his very first quest, which he was able to complete without breaking a sweat. When he got home, he saw that his home was being raided by armored assailants and valiantly fought them off, becoming a hero in the eyes of all of the villagers. The guildmaster told him that someone sent Tromp a letter requesting to meet in Valhabar. Thinking this to be no mere coincidence, he sets off to Valhabar in order to find the people who destroyed his village. Oh wow, you weren't wrong. Tromp does sound pretty cool. I can't wait to see him in action. Yeah, me too. I feel bad for the poor bastards I'll be going against. Well, these monsters can get pretty tough, so I wouldn't be too confident if I were you. Ha! Huh. As if the magnificent Tromp would be felled by some pathetic creature? That wouldn't happen in a million years? Yeah, about that. We'll just have to wait and see what horrific creature mauls you to death when the time comes. Shut up, Barack. You're playing as a puny little wizard. I could piss on you and you would fall over dead. Well, I don't appreciate the rude remark, but I see your point. My AC isn't the highest, and neither is my HP. But if I use my head during combat, I should hopefully be able to stay out of danger. Yeah, well, we'll just have to see about that. All right, guys, settle down. We still have to actually start the game. Speaking of which, are you guys ready to begin? Oh, I've been ready. That five-hour energy is really getting me going. I'm ready to start whenever you are, Ben. Same here, Ben. I'm ready to cleave some puny monsters in half with my great sword. All right, then, without further ado, let's begin. The scene opens with a fleet of dragon ships traveling through the great desert, a brutal and barren landscape that tests the resolve and strength of any crew who dare traverse it. Only the best of the best can safely lead their crew through these unforgiving lands. You all find yourself on the deck of the largest dragon ship in the fleet. Fast-moving sand ships focused on travel across the great desert. With you is a group of hard-working sailors who are working in sync with one another to keep the dragon ship sailing at great speeds. Looking out into the desert sky, you can see swarms of creatures reminiscent of flying snakes with wings and small legs called remobra flying overhead, making sure to keep pace with the fleet. Looking down at the sand, you can see schools of daleks, small sand shark-like creatures that possess the ability to gracefully manipulate the scorching hot sands of the desert to easily swim through as if it were an ocean. Ben, I want to swing my great sword at the closest remobra. That little bastard looked at me funny. Um, well, you can't reach it as it's pretty high in the air. Okay, then I will throw my greatsword at it. No creature gets away with disrespecting the great Trump. Um, all right then, go ahead and roll to hit. Wait, are you sure that's a good idea, Donald? If you throw your only weapon into the seemingly infinite void of sand, then I think you might be a little screwed later on. Hmm, I guess you make a good point. For once, Trump will spare this foolish creature's life and look the other way. Anyways, with that crisis averted, what would you all like to do? Keep in mind that none of you have met yet. Well, like you said, Ben, we still don't know each other, so I'm going to break the ice by pulling out my trusty loot and playing a sweet little ditty. All right, go ahead and roll for performance. Will do. I rolled 18 on that. Excellent. As you start playing a tune on your loot, you notice the moods of the sailors start to lift, whereas before they were stressed and upset. They are now seemingly bursting with life and energy, bobbing their heads and tapping their feet to the music as they work. See, this is nice. We're all just having a good time out here, huh, guys? Hey, Bard, I was listening to that song you were just playing, and I've never heard it before. Who did you learn it from? Oh, I made it up myself. I used to be a performer back home in Dundorma, so you have to be quite creative there to stand out. Most of the songs I know were written by yours truly. Oh, very impressive. So you're from Dundorma? What are you doing all the way out here? Well, I don't want to go into too much detail about my past, but I was told to meet with someone in Val Habar, so I can partake in a grand expedition. Wait, you're meeting with someone in Val Habar as well? That's why I'm here too. I'm hoping to find the answer to a question I've had for a long time. Wow, what a coincidence. I wonder if we're meeting the same person. Did I hear you two pipsqueaks mention something about uh, meeting someone in Val Habar? That's why I'm here too. I received this letter from a man requesting my assistance for a journey he was taking. Huh, well, I think we are meeting the same person. That letter looks exactly like the one I got. Yeah, me too. Oh, wow. What a great coincidence this is to meet my new teammates before I even got to my destination. Yeah, I have to admit that is pretty lucky. 
Well, since we're going to be part of the same team, I think we should share our names. I'll go first. My name is Barama. I'm a student at the Y Academy who recently began training in the arcane arts. Nice to meet you, Barama. I'm Jaiden, a rookie hunter who works for the Royal Scriveners. I like to play songs on my trusty lute and give my support to those who need it. And I'm Tromp, a fearless and ruthless barbarian, elder dragonborn, who's ready to cleave any poor bastard in two with my great sword, and I will show mercy to none of my enemies. Well, what about that Remobra from earlier? That's completely different. My threats toward that creature were enough to scar him for life. I doubt it'll ever sleep peacefully again. After introducing yourself to one another and talking for a while, you notice a man's huge, hulking, and muscly frame striding towards your group, keeping a firm, brisk pace. The man is undeniably the captain of this dragon ship fleet. When he meets you, he bows in respect and begins speaking. Greetings, travelers. How's the voyage treating you so far? Valhaba should be in sight within the hour, so just wait for a little while longer. We've already been at this for a full day now, so I'm sure another hour won't kill you. He lets out a raspy laugh and continues with his speech. By the way, might I ask what brings you three to Valhaba? You don't really look like the businessman type that would, you know, do business there. Well, we all just found out that we were all contacted by the same man that's located there. He also gave each of us a letter. Huh? Do you mind if I take a closer look at that letter, lad? Go right ahead, Captain. The Captain takes the letter and carefully weaves it between his fingers, observing the particular handwriting and unique stamp the letter holds. After finding what he was looking for, he hands it back to you. Aha! I had a feeling it was him. I know exactly who you lads are looking for. Well, spill it already, old man. Who are we looking for? Hey, Trump. It might be a good idea to show the captain some respect. I really don't want to get thrown overboard. I'd like to see him try to throw me overboard. I apologize for my friend's outburst, Captain. I'm starting to see that this big lug won't be the smartest or kindest one in the group. Well, you can bet your ass that I'm the strongest one. <laughs> don't worry about it. I haven't thrown anyone overboard in at least two weeks. I'm practically a changed man now. The captain lets out another raspy, hearty laugh. Anyway... The man you're looking for only goes by the alias the Caravaneer. I can almost guarantee that you'll find him hanging around the gathering hall in the center of town. Thank you so much, Captain, but I have to ask, how, how do you know him? The Captain looks up at the sky for a moment, seemingly reminiscing of old times. Ah, that man is just different. A real unique specimen, if I've ever seen one. Always wanting to go on dangerous adventures for the sake of discovering the unknown. From the several years I spent traveling with him on this dragon ship, I learned that there isn't a leader as great and fearless as him. He led us through countless dangerous encounters here in the Great Desert. And after he left, he entrusted his dragon ship to me. And well, now I'm the captain. Do you know why he left? I sure don't. I'm not his father. Besides, the caravaneer isn't the type to stay in one place for too long unless they have alcohol. The captain lets out yet another hearty laugh and begins to walk back to his post when he notices something wrong. He looks at the swarm of Remobra and realizes that they are starting to panic, screeching and flying sporadically. Oh, this can't be good. The captain's calm and confident appearance slowly begins to shift to one of unease and dread. The captain suddenly yells out to his crew. Man, get to your stations. The sailors immediately drop what they were doing and begin frantically running to their stations, preparing for a devastating encounter. For a brief moment, it seems like the entire world goes silent. The Remobra stop shrieking. The Deleks begin waiting in anticipation, and the crew's stifled breaths can just barely be sounded out. A low, ominous rumbling begins to sound out from a horn on the furthest ship in the fleet, shattering the deafening silence and signaling the arrival of a great threat. Once this horn is sounded, you notice the other ships shifting into a position more optimized for combat. Whoa, man, are you having a stroke right now? And what the hell's going on? Yeah, sorry, man. I have no clue what happened to me right there. It seems like something is about to attack us, something quite dangerous at that. Oh, guys, I'm scared. What are we going to do? Are we going to die already? Don't think like that, Jaiden. We have to prepare our body and minds for whatever is about to happen. The captain rushes back towards you with urgency in his step, desperately trying to hide the panicked expression on his face. All right, I need you guys to listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. You three seem to be capable enough to help us fight this monster. A Jen Moran is going to emerge from the sand any second now, and we need all the help we can get. On this ship, we have some siege weapons we can use to repel the beast. I need you guys to use these weapons however you see fit. The captain points to the ballistae and cannons mounted near the edges of the ship. You cannot let it deal enough damage to our ship, or we will all die here. And if things weren't bad enough, we have to take care of the beast before we land in Valhabar, or the whole city will be destroyed in its wake. 
Well, this certainly just got a lot more interesting. You're right about that. Where exactly is this monster? Point me in its direction, and I'll smack its lame ass around like a living, breathing ping pong ball. Right as you say that, Donald, the sands violently erupt as the monster launches itself into the air. You see its gargantuan mountain-like frame blot out the harsh and unrelenting sun, casting its ominous and deadly shadow over the entire fleet. The beast lands directly on the outermost ship, destroying it and its crew instantly. The ominous blaring from the horn is cut short and replaced with the monster's terrifying roar. It wastes no time and begins to tail the closest ship, quickly catching up. Roll for initiative, for the hunt has begun. Oh man, I rolled a three. Not off to a great start. I got a 17 on my roll, Ben. Oh, what the hell, I rolled a 16. I wanted to go first. I know this game is rigged in your favor, Barack. We are literally just rolling dice, Donald. I don't see how this could be rigged in my favor in any way whatsoever. Obviously, you're using weighted dice. It's the only explanation as to why your character gets to go before my badass one. Come on, guys, cut it out. While you were arguing, I went ahead and rolled the other ship's initiative and the Gen Morans. Before I reveal the turn order, I should probably explain how dragon ship combat works. A dragon ship gets three actions per turn and can use them to fire its cannon and or its ballistae. Alternatively, when the time is right, you can use the Dragonator, an extremely powerful siege weapon that can shred even the strongest Elder Dragon. Just watch out as it can only be used once and it takes two actions to use. On this dragon ship, there are two cannons and two ballistae on both sides of the ship. Lastly, every dragon ship comes equipped with an anti-dragon gong. This can be used as a reaction to prevent the Gen Moran from damaging your ship. Don't rely on it too much though, as it takes some time to charge back up after striking it. In order to win this fight, you must lower the monster's HP to half and land a hit on it with the Dragonator to repel it. This all must be done before arriving in Valhabar, or it's an instant TPK. All right then, let's begin. Hold on a sec, Ben. I think you forgot to tell us the initiative order. Oh yeah, my bad. The initiative order will go as the following. The second ship's crew will go first, followed by Barama, then Tromp, then the third ship's crew, followed by Jaiden and the Gen Moran in last place. All right, the second ship's crew is going to start loading the ballista and make three shots towards the beast. Oh, that's a little rough. Only the third shot was able to damage it. The last shot manages to pierce the Elder Dragon's skin, only causing it to feel a slight uncomfort, dealing 19 piercing damage. Barama, you're up. Mm, this monster is definitely tanky, no doubt about that. All right, Ben. I'm going to arm the Ballistae and make three shots toward the monster. All right, roll 3d20 with a plus six to hit. I rolled an 18, 16, and an 11. With that plus six added to the hit, it brings the rolls up to 24, 22, and a 17. All right, the first two shots will hit the creature. Go ahead and roll 6d10 for the damage. Oh, geez, that's a lot of damage. All right, that's 34 piercing damage. The beast lets out a roar of annoyance as two large spears manage to bore their way into its incredibly thick hide. Its gaze, however, is still fixed on the second ship. Trump, you're up. About time, I dash over to the cannons and load three cannonballs into it, ready to blast a hole through this bastard's stomach. I rolled a 19, seven and a 12 to hit. Ah, sorry, Donald, you needed to roll at least a 20 to damage this monster. Unfortunately, all three shots miss, causing sand to get violently ejected into the air from the cannonball's tremendous force. One cannonball even manages to go right through one unfortunate Delex, deatomizing it. What the hell is that bullshit? I swear this game has it out for me. It happens to the best of us, Donald. Now moving on. Let's hope that the third ship can hit their shots. Screw you, Ben. Haha, <laughs> sorry I couldn't help myself. Yeah, go fuck yourself. Anyways, the crew is going to unleash a volley of cannonballs onto the beast. Only the first cannonball will make contact, dealing 45 damage. The cannonball makes direct contact with the creature's face, causing it to violently reel back in pain. A loud bellow can be heard coming from the creature as it continues to become more aggravated. All right, Jaiden, what will you do? Okay, after seeing how effective the cannon was, I'll run over to the other cannon and make three shots towards the Jim Moran. I rolled a 25, a 17, and an 18. Dang, I'm assuming only the 25 hits? You'd be correct, Joe. Now go ahead and roll for damage. Uh, ooh, that's pretty good. That will deal 42 bludgeoning damage. Nice one. The cannonball hits the Gen Moron directly on its massive horn, causing some parts of the horn to break off. After another irritated bellow, the monster dives underneath the sand, not leaving a trace in its disappearance. Did we do it? Did it run away? 
Oh God, I hope so. I feel like I'm about to faint. Uh, that might be that five-hour energy drink you had earlier, buddy. Suddenly, you hear the captain shout out. Keep your guard up, lads. I don't think we're gonna get out of this one that easily. I reckon it's gonna do something big soon. Right after he finishes speaking, you can feel the ship vibrate heavily. An enormous explosion arises from the sand as the Gen Morin ascends from the ground and leaps over your dragon ship, once again blocking out the sun. Luckily for your team, the beast decided to leap over the ship instead of on top of it. However, the Gen Moran is now right next to your ship, and it's very pissed off. The Gen Moran bellows right next to you, causing your eardrums to overload with the violent, terrifying sounds and rattles of fear and death. You all fall prone, desperately trying to block out the intense noise. Uh, what the hell is it doing? Make it stop. Uh, this is looking pretty bad, guys. Well, it was nice knowing you guys for the three minutes we were together. The captain sees you all knocked over and quickly runs over to help you all get back up. The real fight is just getting started, lads. I need you all to stay strong. We can't let this monster reach Val Habar. We have to... The captain is interrupted by the Gen Moran as it begins to make a low rumbling noise, violently vibrating your bones and eardrums. And the school of Delex below begin to act in a frenzy, frantically throwing themselves at the ship, trying desperately to jump aboard. Look, it's rallying up the Delex. They're starting to jump up on the ship. As you look around, you all see that three Deleks have managed to jump on board, frantically flailing around, snarling and snapping at anything they can reach. After calling for backup, the Gen Moran breaks pace with your party's dragon ship and begins heading towards the third ship. I'll let you three handle these pests. My men will take over the artillery in the meantime. Good luck to you and don't die. After helping you get back on your feet, the captain begins barking orders to the crew, commanding them to start loading the weaponry. All right, we're back up to the top of the initiative order. The second ship begins loading a cannonball and two ballisti shots. The cannonball is the only attack to hit, but it strikes with a natural 20 plus 6, totaling to 26. This will allow the cannonball to deal its maximum damage of 80. The cannonball flies straight and true directly into the beast's side, boring a large hole where it impacted, causing the beast to roar in pain. Barama, after witnessing this spectacle, you notice the Dalex slowly inching closer. What will you do? I think now's a pretty good time to test out my light bow gun. I'll equip it and fire two normal rounds into the closest Del X. All right, sounds good. But before you roll for damage, do you mind explaining how the light bow gun works for the people watching at home? Of course, Ben. The light bow gun is the smallest ranged weapon out of them all. However, it also boasts the highest fire rate out of all of the ranged weapons. It also specializes in support ammo meaning I can reliably inflict a variety of status effects on the monster while still dealing consistent damage. However, as of right now, I can only use normal and trank ammo. I can attack twice on the same turn using this weapon, but my second hit will always be weaker than the initial one. Oh, that's pretty neat. I can't wait to see what kind of strategies you'll be using in the future. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to finally get to use this thing. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and roll the hit. I rolled a 23 on the first one and a nine on the second shot. Okay, that first one hits. What's the damage? Oh, that's three damage. Oh, wow, that's a kick-ass pea shooter you got there, Barama. Make sure to leave some combat for the rest of us. Don't patronize me, Tromp. I was just testing out my weapon. Don't forget that I'm a wizard. I can still do some decent damage with my magic. Yeah, whatever, man. Step aside and let me show you what some real meaty damage looks like. Ben, I would like to rage, and then I will attack a different Delex with my greatsword. I rolled a 17 to hit, dealing 11 damage. Excellent, Trump. As you bring down this ridiculously large blade down onto the Delex, it screeches in pain and tries to bite at you. Does an 11 hit you, Trump? Hell no, it doesn't as if I would ever be harmed by such a pathetic creature. All right, the Delex that Barama attacked is going to try to bite at you as well. It rolled a seven, so it's safe to say that attack missed. You're damn right it did. Now the third Delex is going to try and blast sand in your face, Barama. Does a 13 hit? Ooh, yes it does. The Delex expels a harsh blast of scorching hot sand and rocks directly into your eyes, Barama, dealing you four bludgeoning damage. Yikes, guys, I'm already down to half HP. This is going swimmingly. And you were talking all that shit earlier? about me getting mauled to death. Well, now look at you, getting bent over by a sandfish. Fear not, Barama, for I am a great and humble man who will lay his life on the line for his team. I assure you that I won't let you die, my friend. Uh, well, thanks, I guess. While you three are doing your best to fight off the rampaging Daleks, the third ship is still hard at work maintaining their weaponry. They are going to blast the Gen Moran twice with the cannon, and once with the Ballistae. Only the first cannonball made contact with the 21. 
The cannonball erupts from the cannon and makes direct contact with the monster's skull, dealing a total of 40 bludgeoning damage. The monster struggles to let out a roar. It's clear that all the damage it took is starting to take effect. Holy shit, we might actually make it out of this alive. Of course we will, Barama. I never had any doubt in our team's combined strength and badassness. I wish I had your level of confidence, Trump. All right, Joe, it's your turn. Oh, goody. First, I'm going to use my hunting horn to attack the Dalex that harmed Barama. Oh, you chose to use the hunting horn? That's a pretty complicated weapon, you know. Well, since I'm playing as the bard class, I thought it made sense if I fought with a ridiculously large instrument. Yeah, that makes sense, I suppose. Well, do you mind explaining how the hunting horn works for our viewers? Ooh, I would love to go over some cool tricks for our lovely audience. All right, the hunting horn is a two-handed blunt weapon that can bestow positive status effects on me and my friends. When I attack a creature, I can use my bonus action to store musical notes into my hunting horn. Thanks to my horn maestro feet, I can store up to three notes in my weapon. As an action, I can perform the stored notes to give useful buffs to me and my team. Alternatively, I can use an action to slam my hunting horn into the ground, allowing me to activate a single note melody. When I do this, my allies and I gain the benefit of a single note of my choice for one minute. Wow, sounds like a pretty fun weapon to me. Thank you for the explanation, Joe. Now, what were you planning on doing? No problem, Ben. Anything to help out our lovely viewers. And as for my turn, I'm going to strike the Deluxe that attacked Barama. That's a 14 to hit and six bludgeoning damage. And for my bonus action, I would like to store the damage up small, movement up small, and the skill up small notes into my hunting horn. Excellent. All right, now it's the Jen Mohran's turn. After taking so much damage, it's finally going to retaliate by slamming its body weight into the third ship. With a 25 to hit, the beast crashes onto the ship, dealing 40 bludgeoning damage to its hull. As you see this monster slam down on the ship, you can see some of the men fall overboard, just to be swiftly torn to shreds by the crazed dealers. Holy shit, I think it's safe to say that falling off is a guaranteed death sentence. Yeah, that's pretty horrifying. Just as the crew begins to compose themselves, the Jen Moran stays on the offensive, and launches a huge boulder towards them as well. With a 34 to hit, the boulder lands directly on the dragon ship's cannons, killing some of the men operating them. The devastating attack dealt 22 bludgeoning damage. Due to the heavy loss of equipment and crew members, the third ship will only be able to make one action per turn. The beast bellows once again as it disappears into the sand. I hate to ask again, but did we do it this time? I highly doubt it, and besides, you should, you, you should be more worried about the damn fish that's about to eat you alive. It went under the sand again. Everyone find out where it's going to emerge. Do not lose sight of it. The captain looks back towards the horizon and notices that Valhabar has finally come into view. The shocking realization fills him with dread. The captain rushes towards the deck and yells out, How are you guys holding up down there? I see the port in the distance. We need to end this ASAP. We're working on it, Captain. We got this under control. Well, I hope we do at least. All we can do here is try our damn best. If we still fail, it just shows that we weren't worthy enough to take on this journey. Okay, back up to the top of the list. The second dragon ship is unable to do anything since the Gen Moran hasn't shown itself yet. So all they can do for now is wait. Barama, it's your turn. Okay, I'll retire my light bow gun for now and we'll cast Firebolt at the Delex that attacked me earlier. Hmm, that's better than nothing. That's a 17 to hit and five damage. Oof, sorry to tell you this, Barama, but the Delex is immune to fire damage so it'll be taking no damage at all this turn. Damn, just my luck. I probably am going to get mauled to death. Not if I have anything to do about it. I'm going to attack the second Delex, the same one Jaden and Barama are fighting. That's a 23 to hit and 12 damage. Oh, nice. Go ahead and describe the kill. Oh, hell yeah. I grasp my greatsword and furiously swing it directly into the stupid fish's stomach, slicing it in half and serving up a delicious deluxe filet at the same time. Thanks, Trump. I don't know how much longer I could have dealt with that little shit. No problem, my friend. I'll never let a bug-eyed sandfish devour you. As the deluxe's corpse lays motionless, the first deluxe begins thrashing around, attempting to get closer to the corpse, shamelessly trying to consume its fallen sibling. Oh, thank God. The deluxe is too distracted to make an attack towards any of you, skipping its turn. Meanwhile, the third deluxe begins jumping towards you, Jaiden viciously trying to bite at you. Does an eight hit you? Nope, I'm still perfectly fine as of right now. 
Alrighty, back over to Dragon Ship 3. The crew is taking this opportunity to try and repair the ship as much as they can before the monster returns. Skipping their turn. All right, my turn. I would like to use Cure Wounds on Barama, healing him for 9 HP. Nice, I'm back up to full HP. Thanks, Jaiden. No problem, Barama. And that's all I want to do right now. All right, sounds good, Joe. Okay, now it's the Gen Moran's turn. It's finally going to emerge on the left of your ship, causing the sand below it to blast into the air with dangerous speeds. The monster is going to try to make a brutal attack by sweeping its tusks across the ship's deck. I'll need everyone to make a dexterity saving throw. Wait, before the monster can attack, I'm going to dash to the anti-dragon gong and smack the shit out of it. Nice move, Tromp. As you dash towards the gong, you can see the captain in the corner of your eyes, looking as if he's trying to cheer you on to get there faster. After you slam the mallet into the gong, an ear-piercing shriek can be heard coming from the instrument. The Gen Moran reels back and bellows in agony, doing everything in its power to get away from the torturous frequencies of the anti-dragon gong. It launches itself away from your ship, now carefully keeping enough distance between itself and your party. Now that the Chen Mohran has shown itself once again, the second ship will fire all three cannons towards it. With a dirty 20, a 12, and an 8, the first cannon strikes true, while the others fly aimlessly into the sandy void. The cannonball hits with an impressive 57 bludgeoning damage. The monster is beginning to show obvious signs of struggling. The Gen Mohran lets out another roar of pain and anguish, still trying to keep up with your dragon ship. We can do this, guys. We really need to finish these small monsters off quick, though. I'm gonna fire two more shots towards the first D-Lex with my light bow gun. 15 and a 12 to hit for a total of four damage. You fire two shots into the Delex, trying to cannibalize its fallen sibling. The shock of the attack makes the Delex stop in its tracks to start flailing towards you. Well, that's better than nothing, I guess. I charge the third bastard and smash him with my great sword with a 25 to hit and a total of seven damage. Nice one, Tromp. Now, the Delex that was barreling towards Barama finally got close enough to bite at you with a 10 to hit. Not this time he doesn't. I was just barely able to move out of the way in time. Nice one, Barama. Now the third Delex is going to blast sand at you, Tromp. With a nine to hit, the creature spits out a pathetic cloud of sand in the opposite direction of you, missing you completely. Yeah, that was pretty pathetic. Switching back to the third ship, the remaining crew members begin loading their last ballistae. With a low roll of eight, the ballistae malfunctions and only launches the spear a few feet away. Your attention shifts towards the captain, who suddenly shouts out, We don't have much longer, lads. The port's coming in hot. You now realize that Val Habar's emergency siren is blaring through the sky, obviously aware of their impending doom. Oh, crap. Ben, how much longer would you say we have until we reach the port? I'd say in about two more turns. Two turns? Oh, gee, this is pretty nerve-wracking. All right, I'm going to perform a melody using the notes I had stored earlier, blessing me and my team with a plus one to melee attacks, plus five movement speed, and a plus one bonus to any skill of our choice. And as for my bonus action, I will cast Bardic Inspiration on Barama. Nice one, Jaiden. Now, the Gen Moran will attempt to ram the back of your sand ship. With a 17 to hit, you all feel the ground beneath you violently shake as the beast slams itself into your ship, knocking all of you to your feet. Some men on your ship were knocked off, suffering the same fate as the last poor souls who fell overboard. Oh, those poor souls. We were having such a great time playing music and laughing together earlier. Get used to it, Jaden. Such is war. You also notice that the third Delex was knocked off of the ship along with the men. The second ship will unload two ballistae and one cannonball towards the monster. The first hit is a natural 25, a 10, and then another natural 25. Wow, back-to-back -back natural 20s. The crew is really giving it their all now, it seems. The two ballistae make contact, boring deep into the monster's skin, dealing a devastating 60 piercing damage. All right, Barama, it's your turn. Okay, I'm going to once again shoot the Delex twice. A 19 and a 24 to hit, dealing a measly three piercing damage. I really hope this weapon gets stronger in the future or else I'm screwed. Yeah, it does seem pretty underpowered. Maybe we can work something out between sessions, Barack. Yeah, it would be nice to do more than a maximum of eight damage. Have no fear, for I will slay this nuisance here and now. I make an attack with my great sword with an 18 to hit and 10 damage. Good work, guys. That will finish off the last Delex on board. How do you want to end it, Trump? Just like last time, I sliced the stupid bastard clean in half, stopping its frantic frailing right where it stood. Excellent work. Now the third ship will attempt to fire one final ballistae. With a 17 to hit, the spear launches straight into the sand with great force, impaling an unlucky Delex right into the ground. The captain notices that you took care of the Delex and shouts out to you all again. Hey, you big guy, I need you up here pronto. Ben, I make my way towards the captain. Wait here, guys, I'll be right back. Trump, 
after telling your team to wait behind. You dash over to the captain. All right, lad, listen carefully. I need you to stand on the bow of the ship and flip that lever when I tell you to, not a second later and not a second earlier. Do you think you can handle that? Well, I don't see why not. That seems easy enough. All right, we'll make your way over there quickly. If we don't counterattack now, you can forget about reaching Valhaba in one piece. Okay, Ben, I'll make my way towards the bow of the ship and wait for further instructions. Tromp, you begin to sprint towards the bow of the ship. Upon arrival, you realize that the port is now extremely close. The deafening tone of the emergency siren is blasting directly into your ears. The fate of this crew and the city lies solely within your hands. You're up, Jaden. Is there anything you would like to do? I would, actually. I want to run towards the cannons and fire three cannonballs towards it. Only one of those managed to hit the Jin Moran, though, dealing 46 bludgeoning damage. Jaiden, as you unleash this devastating volley of death onto the monster, a horrid bellow erupts from the monster, unmistakably the sound made from such a suffering creature. It begins to burrow beneath the sands once more. The captain begins shaking in anticipation. Hold! Hold! A full minute passes, feeling akin to several hours. The dreadful silence begins to overwhelm your senses. Anxiety pounds through your entire body, being crushed by the overwhelming weight of the thousands of innocent lives that have been placed on you. Your heart begins to feel like it's beating out of your chest. You can feel your knees start to buckle, and your hands start to sweat profusely. Valhabar seems like it's almost in reach. The fate of this city will be determined within these next few seconds. Failing to succeed means the death of you and your team, along with the destruction of an entire city. Finally, the silence is shattered by the Gen Moran's wail of defiance. Bursting out from the sand, directly in front of your ship, it bellows once more, preparing for its final attack, and begins to charge towards your ship head on, gaining more and more speed by the second. Tromp. You see this gargantuan mass of rock-like hide and muscle blasting towards you at full speed, creating a massive trail of clouds of dust and sand in its wake. The Gen Moran is finally upon you. The monster begins to jump out from the sand, barreling towards the bow of the ship. Once again, the entire fleet is overcasted with its blood-lusted shadow. As you stare this monster down, you feel like you're looking into the eyes of death itself, as if you're challenging the Reaper to the world's deadliest game of chance. Just as the monster is about to make contact with the ship, you hear the captain scream at the top of his lungs, almost destroying his vocal cords. Fire! I pull the lever, Ben, not a second too early nor a second too late. As you pull the lever, a grin appears on your face, fully knowing you conquered death at this fatal game of chance. You hear a high-pitched whirring coming from the front of the ship. With a loud bang, an enormous spinning barbed spear launches at the monster at terminal velocity, mercilessly drilling the monster square in its soft underbelly, dealing a massive 100 piercing damage. The beast jolts back in pain, screeching at the top of its lungs, before reeling back onto itself, laying motionless for a while, appearing to look like that of a craggy mountain range. The Gen Moran roars a sound of defeat before disappearing back into the unforgiving desert sands. After a few seconds of silence, a loud cheer can be heard coming from the crew in the remaining ships. Their cheers harmonize together to form a wave of ecstatic yelling and hollering. Yippee! Holy shit, we actually did it. I thought we were going to die on the first encounter. And uh, that was awesome. I nailed the shit out of that thing. I doubt it's gonna mess with us again anytime soon. The captain approaches your group with a fat smile on his hardened face. We actually did it, lads. And we just barely did it before reaching our destination. The captain takes a good look at Trump. So how did it feel up there, big guy? Were you scared at all? Hell no, I wasn't. I never buckle under pressure. Besides, I had a feeling I was, I was gonna be the one to strike it down. I could have killed that thing by myself anyway. The captain, back to his usual self, emits another graveled laugh. I'd like the confidence, lad. Say, why don't you join my crew? We could use a reliable deckhand like you. Did I already mention that we're known as legends out here? I appreciate the offer, sir, but these fine gentlemen right here need me. I can't have them getting killed by some insignificant monster. Huh, I see. Very well, lad, I respect your decision. The captain sighs and looks at the floor, visibly upset by the rejection. Oh, poor guy. Why'd you have to reject him like that, Donald? Hey, I declined as respectfully as I could. Besides, without me, you two would probably die the second you get into the next encounter. The captain quickly composes himself and continues speaking. Anyway, gentlemen, we finally made it to Valhabar. He gestures his hands towards the main gate with a look of pride on his face. You're looking for the gathering hall, right? Just keep walking into town and you'll notice the building. Trust me, you can't miss it. Well, I have to get back to my crew. Till we meet again, lads. With that, the captain salutes to you three and begins walking back towards his dragon ship. Uh, 
I really don't know if that was helpful advice or not. Anyways, what do you guys want to do? Should we head straight to the gathering hall to meet the caravaneer? Or should we look around for a bit? I think we should go straight to the caravaneer. I'm ready to meet this strange man. I'm also hungry as shit and could really go for a warm meal. Could do with that. After fighting for our lives, I kind of just want to find somewhere to take a good nap. Okay, sounds good, guys. All right, Ben. We all begin walking towards town. All right, as you leave the port, you stumble into town. You can see various merchants trying to sell their wares to the countless people walking along the busy and heavily populated street. Some merchants even ride on top of large bird-like creatures called gargwa, selling and hauling rare commodities. Looking around, you also notice several shops adorning the street, each peddling their own unique wares or services. Finally, you land across a massive hollowed-out dragon ship, adorned with various colorful flags and instruments, much like the anti-dragon gong seen on the other dragon ships. At the center lies a massive faux monster skull decoration. I'm assuming this is the gathering hall. Huh. I guess the captain was right. I don't think we could have missed this even if we tried. Yeah, it looks spectacular, although I didn't think it would be a massive dragon ship. Yeah, no kidding, this looks like a place fit for a king. I'll definitely have to live in one of these in the future. Yeah, I have to admit, it would be pretty badass to live in one of these things. Oh boy, all this talk about ships reminds me of the time I went on a fishing trip with some dude named Noah. He built this massive ship and we lived in it for a while. He even had a petting zoo in there. I forgot what the ship was called though. He was a really cool guy. You lived on Noah's Ark? Jesus Christ, Joe, how old are you? Oh yeah, that's the name of it. It was Noah's Ark. Ah, good times. Yeah, I'm not really surprised at this point. Wow, that is pretty interesting to hear. Anyway, would you all like to enter the gathering hall? Yes, we would, Ben. I have to say, I'm pretty interested to see how this is going to turn out. Yeah, me too. What do you think we're going to be doing? Uh, there's only one way to find out, Jaden. Ben, I barged through the door, making sure to make my presence known. Uh-oh. Hear me, for my name is Trump, the mighty Moron Conqueror. My team and I humbly request an audience with the man who goes by the alias the Caravaneer. Trump, as you barge through the door declaring what it is you seek. Everyone stops what they were doing and sets their gaze directly on you. Two hunters in the corner begin to scoff at you, not at all trying to hide their rude gesture. Another man begins to look back at his book, uninterested in what you have to say. What the hell is wrong with you people? Did you not hear me the first time? And you two over there? Knock that shit off before I kick your asses. Ooh, things are starting to heat up in here. Go ahead and roll for intimidation, Trump. Oh, I almost forgot to mention something important. Since you are playing as the Barbarian class, I thought it made sense to change your intimidation modifier to strength instead of charisma. Seeing how you would rather show off your intimidating build to scare someone rather than using words. Oh, sweet. This should go pretty well, then. That's a dirty 20, Ben. I scared the shit out of them. Well, not quite. Instead, they roll their eyes and begin speaking to one another, occasionally glaring back towards your party. Damn it, Trump. We've been in here for five seconds and you're already making enemies for us. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to jump us later. Get your panties out of a twist, Barama. I doubt they're stupid enough to try anything when I'm around. The gathering hall is awfully quiet. The quest receptionist is beginning to look scared and the guards are starting to shift their stern glances towards you, Trump. Shit, Trump, there's guards in here. You're gonna get us arrested. How was I supposed to know there would be guards in here? Oh, so you mean to tell me that you didn't think that an official building of the Hunter's Guild wouldn't have protection at all times? I swear, Barama, hop off my back or I'll knock you on yours. I'd like to see you try, you brainless oaf. It won't be that hard, considering you almost got eaten by a fish. Oh, please don't fight, guys. I'll try to play some good old tunes again. Maybe that'll ease the tension in here. All righty, go ahead and roll another performance check, Jiden. I rolled a 12, is that any good? As you begin to play one of your songs, you can feel some of the tension lift away. The receptionist begins to calm down, and the guards go back to minding their own business. But the two hunters continue to gossip. The crushing tension has been replaced with this awkward air. Ah, oh, well, I did my best, guys. Can you two please learn to cooperate with each other? I really don't want this to be a common occurrence. I just want to have a good time with my friends without getting into trouble every few minutes. Yeah, Jiden's right, Trump. Can we put this aside and act a little more aware of our surroundings? Hmm, I guess I'm willing to tone it down a bit, only because I don't want to see Jiden cry. That would be really awkward to deal with. Oh, thank you, guys. I'm so happy we could settle our differences with the power of music and friendship. Yeah, whatever you say, Jiden, just tone down the corniness there a bit, buddy. 
Yeah, seriously, I love you, buddy, but that was hard to listen to. Sorry, guys, but you'll just have to get used to it, for I was born on the cob. Dear God, please just stop. I'm praying for that five-hour energy to finally do its job. After an awkward entrance and a panicked attempt at saving Grace, you hear a man suddenly call out to you. It's a man with white hair wearing a unique set of clothing, and on his head rests a rather stylish-looking red hat. Hey, you three, over here. Do you guys think that's the caravaneer? I think we're about to find out. Ben, we make our way towards the man. I swear if this man Lord dumps on us, I'm going to lose it. You'll be fine, Donald. You all make your way towards the man. You see that he's talking with an ancient Wyvarian, dressed up like a cowboy with a ridiculously large hat. Weird, I'm playing as a Wyvarian, and I've never heard of an ancient Wyvarian. What are they? Good question, Barack. An ancient Wyvarian is a Wyvarian who survived past the Great Dragon War several thousands of years ago. Oh, that's pretty strange. What's someone like that doing here? Well, in the Hunter's Guild, only Wyvarians can become guild masters. So my guess is that wise old Wyvarian right there owns and runs this fine establishment, possibly even the city. The whole city? I doubt that, Trump. How did you even come to that conclusion? Weren't you paying attention earlier? I was born and raised by the guild master in Minagard and even became a hunter myself. The guild master is a very powerful, authoritative figure. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he runs Valhabar. I'm pretty sure I know a thing or two about how the guild works, Barama. Yet you were surprised when there were guards in the gathering hall, whatever man. As you walk towards the man, they stop talking to each other and greet you with a smile. Ah, are you the fine gentleman I sent those letters to? Yes, sir, we are. I'm glad that we can finally meet. Would you happen to be the caravaneer? The man laughs and looks over at the ancient Wyvarian before continuing. I sure am. But I have to ask, how did you know my name? We can ask you the same question. How did you know our names? Also, why did you send letters out to us? Three random strangers of all people. A wide grin appears on the man's face. Ah, I like you, Trump. I think we're gonna get along just fine. But to answer your question, I have a lot of contacts, you know. I've been told to send letters to you three by your organizations. Barama, after that incident, the Y Academy chief researcher contacted me, requesting that I take you with me on my journey. Wait, so my father told you to send me that letter? You'd be correct, my friend. Your father wants you to learn as much as you can about the world, and we both think this is the best way to do it. Well, what about me? Who told you to send my letter? Well, I basically told you already. I thought you would have put it together by now. So you're saying the guildmaster back home in Minigard sent me here? Yep, he sure did. Huh? Who would have guessed? What about you? The caravaneer points to you, Jaiden. Do I have to spell it out for you, too? No, I think I got it figured out. I suppose the head scrivener told you about me and asked that you send me a letter. Brilliant, my friend. Look at the noggin on this one. Um, anyway. To answer your question, the captain told us about you. He said he used to be a part of your crew a long time ago, and that you gave him your dragon ship. Can you tell us any more about that? The caravaneer's eyes light up as if he is remembering long forgotten memories. Ah, uh, the captain, huh? Yes, he and I are good friends, although we haven't spoken in ages. Well, why not? Did you two get into a fight or something? Oh, definitely not. We got along very well. I just don't like the feeling of being tied down to one place, and he didn't want to stop sailing through the great desert. He told me that it felt like his calling, so I decided to give him my ship as a departing gift. Oh, that's sweet of you. You seem like a pretty cool guy. Thanks, friend. Now, Mr. Guildmaster, would you like to explain to our friends here what our objective is? Huh, I guess that is the Guildmaster. Ah. I told you so, Barama. As the caravaneer begins to shift the topic, the ancient Wyvarian, who was quietly listening to your conversation, begins to speak up. I'm sure some of you experienced this firsthand or heard about it, but recently, we have been getting non-stop reports of monsters acting way more aggressive than normal. Thanks to the research at the Y Academy, we have concluded that an epidemic has started spreading rapidly to monsters, and far as we can tell, not a single monster is immune to the virus. We still don't know what causes it or how to cure a monster suffering from it. We do know that unless we begin searching for a cure soon, the virus will eventually kill off every monster in the world. A worried expression appears on the guild master's face. 
That's where you come in. I'm sending you lot out to journey across the world in search of what is causing it and how to stop it. So how about it? Are you three in? Of course we are, sir. We didn't come all this way for nothing after all. You're damn right I am. Oh boy, I'm so excited to travel across the world. I wonder what kind of people we'll meet. Great. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Now, another important piece of information. As we travel from city to city, we're going to try to pick up some help along the way. I made a mental note of the kind of people I want to recruit. Well, lay it on us then, Mr. Caravaneer, sir. We're going to need our own chef so we don't have to spend more of our precious resources on food. A blacksmith to help us craft gear while we're away from town. And a researcher to help file all of our findings and point us in the right direction. That sounds like a lot of work. How the hell are we supposed to do all of that? Don't sweat it, Trump. This isn't our number one priority. I have a feeling that they'll each cross our paths at some point in our journey. I'm pretty lucky, you know. Oh, having our own personal chef sounds like a treat. Oh boy, I can't wait to find them. Well, I do have my eyes on one chef in particular. Ooh, who is it? He goes by the name Musashi. He's a chef that has mastered the art of street food and possesses the ability to whip up gourmet dishes in the blink of an eye. I've had his food before and I swear I've never felt better. And he doesn't go light on the portions either. Holy shit, he sounds awesome. Where can we find this Musashi? Well, luckily for us, Musashi lives here in Valhabar. On the other hand, though, I heard that his ingredient supply route was shut down. Now he locked himself in his house, refusing to speak with anyone. It can never be that easy, huh? I guess not, Brahma. I think before we depart from Valhabar, we should try to recruit him. It'll definitely help us in the long run. Yeah, I agree with you there. I gotta try this man's delectable dishes. I have some more questions about the virus. Do we have any clues to go off of? Or are we just blindly grasping at straws? I'm glad you asked Barama. The caravaneer begins to take off his hat and pulls out a small shiny shard, brimming with an elegant radiance from underneath it. I found this thing on one of my past adventures and I think this shard can hopefully be a good starting point. What makes you say that? Do you even know what it is? Nope, not a clue. But you should always trust your gut, and my gut is telling me this thing is pretty damn important. All right, I guess I'll just have to take your word for it. Any more questions? If not, I recommend checking in at the inn upstairs. Tomorrow's gonna be a busy day, and you already look quite beat up. Yeah, no kidding. I, I valiantly fought off a Gen Moran and, and defended the city. Oh, so that was all the racket I heard going off earlier. That siren goes off so much I began to tune it out. Wait, so you're telling me this is a common occurrence? This shit happens often? Yep, like every other week. What the hell, that's ridiculous. And to think I performed a heroic act and saved thousands of lives? Well, technically, you still did Trump. If you didn't flip that lever, we would all probably be dead by now. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm still pretty pissed off, though. Anyway, I'm gonna keep talking with my good friend here. You guys should go get some rest. I went ahead and bought your rooms ahead of time, so enjoy. With that, the guild master and the caravaneer wave you off with a large smile. Would you guys like to head to your rooms? Yeah, I would. I would like some time to reflect on what happened today and write down some notes in my journal. Yeah, same here, Ben. I'm pooped after today, and I think that five-hour energy is starting to wear off. Hold it, Ben. I'm still famished. Is there any way I can get some food in here? Um, yeah, there's a small bar near the exit. Great. I'm going to grab some food to go before heading to bed. I'll catch up with you gentlemen in the morning. All right, sounds good, Trump. Just don't cause too much trouble by yourself. Yeah, Trump, I really don't want to have to bail you out of jail. Don't worry about me. I can handle myself just fine. Thank you very much. Trump, as you say goodnight to your new teammates, you walk over to the bar and begin browsing the menu. Greetings, my good sir. What can I get for you on this fine evening? Hmm, let's see. You got any specials going on, Sweet Cheeks? The barkeep blushes for a moment before pointing towards the sign hanging from the main desk. Well, right now, we're serving seafood caught fresh from the Dundorma Sea. Our most popular item right now is the serpentine salmon filet with fried coral shrimp. How does that sound, my good sir? It sounds perfect, miss. I'll take it. Here you go, sir. And don't worry about paying. It's on the house. Why, thank you very much, young lady. She winks at you and quickly turns away, tending to her other customers. Oh, what a sweet girl. Also, I'm glad she did that because I'm broke as shit. All right, Joe, I want to head back to my room and turn in for the night. Okay, sounds good. As you begin to walk back, you feel someone place their hand on your shoulder. Where do you think you're going, freak? Yeah, what's your deal? Barging in here like you own the place. We should teach you a lesson. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? 
and get your damn grubby hands off me before I break them. The hunter who grabbed you chuckles and forcefully shoves you forward with the intent of knocking you down. You managed to catch yourself and save your free plate of food. Oh, hell no, he didn't. I'm going to calmly uh, recollect myself and set my tray of food on the floor and slowly turn to face that hunter. Listen, you little fucker, you can shove me all you want, but by trying to knock my food out of my hands, you blatantly disrespected not only me, but the hardworking staff who put all of their love and passion into my dish. You think we give a damn about those lazy workers? Please, they're the slowest bunch of bumbling idiots I've ever seen. Say one more thing, either of you, I fucking dare you. Oh yeah? What are you gonna- Then I punch that snide bastard right in his face. A 12 to hit and eight damage. Oh shit, what the hell are you doing, Donald? Screw off, Barack. Stop metagaming and stay out of this. Your character isn't even in the room. Luckily for you, Donald, the hunter isn't wearing his armor, allowing for a clean strike to the jaw. The hunter reels back in shock. A wicked grin appears on his face as he gets ready to throw himself at you. Oh, you don't know what you just got yourself into. Just as he begins dashing towards you, the guildmaster and caravaneer intervene, stepping between you and the two other hunters. What in tarnation is going on here? The guildmaster looks back at the two hunters with a stern glare. Are you two stirring up shit again? I swear this happens every week with you two. I promise, if I hear you two causing any more fights, I will take away your hunting license and ban you from every hunting guild on the damn planet. The hunters flinch at the kind guildmaster's sudden change in nature, quickly dropping the cocky facade they were wearing earlier. I'm so sorry, it won't happen again, sir. You won't see or hear about it ever again. I yeah, please don't take away our hunting license. The hunters scramble towards the exit and dash through the door. I'm so sorry about that, Trump. Those hunters have been causing so much trouble recently. I should have tended to matters before they got out of hand. No worries, sir. It felt pretty good clocking that cocky bastard right in his stupid face. Yeah, and it was pretty entertaining to watch, too. The guildmaster bursts into laughter and begins hobbling back over to his seat. The caravaneer approaches you with the tray of food you left on the ground. I think this is yours, my friend. It is indeed. I had to set it down before I got to work. Hey, you handled yourself pretty well. You know, I would have done the same thing if I was in your position. Well, you should really head back to your room before you get into any more fights. Yeah, I'll do that. I can't wait to dig into this delicious meal and sleep on a warm bed. I'll see in the morning, Mr. Uh, do you have another name I can call you beside uh, the caravaneer? Nope, it's just the caravaneer. You'll get used to it, my friend. Eh, whatever. See you in the morning, man. Ben, I walk back to my room. As you finally arrive at your room, you devour the flavorful fish and throw yourself on the bed, sinking into its soft mattress, instantly falling asleep. All right, guys, that's where we're gonna end the first session. What do you all think so far? Uh, I'm having a great time so far, Ben. I'm excited to see what kind of monsters we'll be facing in the future. Yeah, this is super fun. I can't wait to use my hunting horn some more. No kidding, I hope we get some more combat in the next session because I need to kill something to have fun. I'm glad you all are enjoying it so far. I'm excited to see how you will all fare throughout this journey. Well, until next time, guys, thank you all so much for watching.